Thank you and welcome everyone. Um, I feel connected already, even though I can't see you all, I'm imagining us all meditating together and you know, being able to drop into this beautiful sacred space for this next hour. Um, a little bit about me, I came to be um, interested in the practice of meditation back when I was 19 and have been meditating pretty frequently ever since then. Uh, one of the main traditions I've meditated in is the Zen Buddhist tradition, although I also make it creative and make it my own and um, you know, it morphs and changes as time goes on. Uh, but I am a psychotherapist in private practice and I do a lot of guided meditations with clients and it's my first time doing this, so I'm a little nervous, I'm noticing just wanting to make sure that I'm able to reach you through the screen, which is a little bit different for me, aside from doing you know, individual sessions. So I thought we would start with connecting in with the body, because I find that that's, that's a part that I often ignore. And I think that's a part that really helps us to get grounded. So why don't we start with a couple cleansing breaths. Breathing in holding for a moment, and then releasing. Sometimes it helps to even make like an audible sigh on the out breath, really landing in your body right here, right now. Bringing yourself fully into the present moment. So if there's anything you've brought with you to this session, maybe there's something that you've been worried about, or maybe there's, you know, something that happened today that's lingering, you can even just ask it to step aside. And if it comes back very gently, presencing it and asking it to step aside again. So this, this hour is just for you. So as we drop in, I want to start with just really grounding with the earth. Noticing your feet, if you want to close your eyes for a minute, noticing your feet very firmly planted on the earth. Maybe you even notice sensations of your feet feeling magnetized to the earth, where the earth is kind of reaching up to hold you in that space. And continuing to run the breath as an anchor. So again, if you, if you find that you get a little off, and your mind wanders, just very gently bringing your mind back into the present moment. I love how Sharon Salzberg often talks about, it's not that we leave, it's in the return. And I would say it's in the gentle return. So another deep breath, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. I want you to now imagine the earth reaching up with such reverence for you and sending you energy from her core, reaching up through the bottoms of your feet, coming up into your legs and using your breath, letting it fill your belly, your heart, breathing it up and letting it come out the top of your head and reaching up towards the stars. And from that place, breathing that down through the top of your head, all the way down through your spinal column, imagining this beautiful light coming down, down through your pranic tube, filling your hips and legs, really anchoring you both from above and below. And as you feel this, if you can feel yourself starting to settle, which I'm noticing, <laughs> um, starting to settle into the present moment, what I've been thinking about is the body and how much the body does for us and how much we override it or sometimes have negative feelings about it. And I really wanted to focus this meditation on deep appreciation for our bodies. So I want you to think about a part of your body that you struggle with, just for a moment. For me, I can tell you it's my belly. That's sometimes what I struggle with. 
And I want you to put your hand on the part of your body that you struggle with and really notice if you have any resistance to sending it love. It's okay if the resistance is there, but imagining sending it all kinds of healing light, maybe even apologizing for any ways in which you've um, overridden it or felt like you were kind of against it. I can tell you that in the last uh, six months, eight months, I have gotten much more appreciative of all the things my body does. I had a bout with cancer and uh, went through chemotherapy and I'm a couple months out of that. And I am feeling so much more reverence and tenderness towards all the things that my body has gone through. So I share that with you to invite you into your body to really see if there are tender places that are needing reverence and love and tenderness. Just taking a moment to see what has your body gone through recently that has been challenging? Has it been like a lot of anxiety running through the body? Has it been COVID maybe and having to deal with that? Just using your breath to stay anchored in the body. So we're gonna really just putting your hands there and sending so much love and tenderness for all the things it does. Starting with our feet. So noticing all the places our feet, just how integral they are to us getting around, how integral they are for us to feel grounded and centered. I want you to just notice if your feet, what are your feet feeling right now? Are they feeling a little bit tight? Are they feeling any kind of pain? Pinpoint awareness on your feet. Now blessing and releasing that. I want you to come up into your calves and just notice. Is there any tightness there? They're also integral to getting us around and helping us to move about in the world in the ways that we want to. Pinpoint awareness there, full focus on that part of the body. Even sending those muscles and bones and tissues of the calves, just tons of love. Now bringing through your breath, bringing yourself up into your thighs. Notice the, the difference in the thigh muscle compared to the calves, how strong they are. And, and even noticing where they touch, you know, on the couch or the chair, wherever you're sitting. And sending such love and gratitude for exactly what they do, getting you around for their flexibility or lack of flexibility sometimes. Blessing and releasing that. Now coming up into your hips, noticing, do they feel tight? Maybe you can even move around a little bit, kind of get a sense of where you are with your hips. I know I hold a lot of tension in my hips. I do a lot of sitting and sometimes my hips let me know that I need to move more than I do sometimes. So just noticing. We do have a cat joining us too. So if you're looking. Um, so now blessing and releasing that, coming up into your belly. Just noticing if you can soften in through the belly. We hold our breath a lot, both due to anxiety, but I think we're also trained to, you know, kind of hold our breath to keep our bellies flat. And I think a lot of us, most of us are meant to have a little more of a Buddha belly. I know I've got one. So just softening the belly. Maybe you can even put your hand on your belly and say, thank you so much. Noticing all the beautiful, amazing things our internal organs do to keep us going. It's kind of phenomenal what they do behind the scenes to keep us digesting food and, um, you know, to really help us keep our life force energized. 
So sending so much love and compassion towards our internal organs, our liver, gallbladder, pancreas. If there's been any injury to the abdomen, just noticing if it's a part that needs more love. If you notice you have any judgment in that area, I'm just asking yourself to soften a little bit around it, letting it be really loved and appreciated for all that it does. We're going to come up into our heart. Let's bless and release our, our abdomen. Coming up into our beautiful hearts. Of so many things are stored. You know, we store the grief, we store the pain. But we also have so much joy and they can't exist with one, one needs the other. So really dropping in and asking into what is the quality of my heart in this moment? Is there some pain there that needs to be expressed or acknowledged? Am I putting a cap on my joy for some reason? Does it not feel safe to be in my expanded joyful space? And not judging any of it, all is welcome, making room for every little bit. That's good. Yeah. I think our hearts endure a lot. And it's really good for us to be able to turn towards ourselves and really show ourselves appreciation. Now we can bless and release that. Let's come up into our necks now. Let's just see, maybe you even move your neck from side to side. Sort of notice if it's, if it's tight. Notice if you're carrying any burdens that don't belong to you on your shoulders. Using your breath to release them. Maybe even shake your hands out a little bit. Sometimes a little movement helps. Softening your jaw, coming up into your facial muscles, and sometimes even just kind of moving your face around and seeing where am I carrying tension? I carry it a lot up in the forehead, I get a little contracted in the forehead from too much thinking at times. I want you to notice what's the quality of what are you holding in your face? And allow yourself through your breath to just really soften into it. When coming into the top of your head, using your breath, breathe more of this life force energy into all these parts we just attended to. Noticing is there any part that needs your attention right now? So feeling into it and seeing if there's any part within you that still feels a contraction. It might be your chest, it might be your abdomen. Our bodies are such wonderful teachers. They have a consciousness all their own. And so often I think we, we are not, we're used to living from our necks up. We're not used to really paying attention to what's going on in our bodies. So today we really honor and tune into that body awareness. So as you drop in, you start to notice there's a certain area that has, you know, maybe it has a contraction, maybe it feels hot, just bringing your awareness fully to it. And as you do that, I want you to notice, does it shift or change? Does it start to open a little bit? 
Is there a little more spaciousness for something new to be born? Or does it tighten and try and hide? Because sometimes that happens. Sometimes we have parts that don't want to be seen. So just spending a minute really tuning into this part. Losing your eyes if you feel comfortable doing that. Allowing the breath to move through you more fluidly. And allowing your whole system to recognize that in this moment, your only job is to attend and befriend the body. In this moment, there's nothing to do or fix or change. In this moment, you are safe. It's safe to let your nervous system let down. If there's any part of you that feels on high alert, Allowing this part to know that in this moment, all is well. We often get so many messages in the world that tell us that we're not okay. So it's so important in the practice to have moments where we reassure our whole system that we're safe. So if, there are any, any, if there's anybody who isn't feeling 100% let down, safe, just because of a high alert pattern, I want you to look around your room and just see, is there any threat in the room? Are you warm? Are you comfortable? Do you have enough to eat? Looking around and seeing just how safe you really are. Sometimes we need to actually kind of snap ourselves into the present moment and see that there's almost never a threat around us, even though our systems might be running that. So as I look around, I see I have a dog sitting next to me holding space. I've got some cats off to the right. I have many lovely things, plants and candles around me. So I just invite you to look around and notice the abundance in your home, the abundance of safety. And let your nervous system take that in. We are not designed to be constantly bombarded with so much news. And sometimes our nervous systems just can't handle all the things that are coming at them, which is why it's so important to step back and turn things off and really connect in with our inner wisdom, our inner guidance and bring ourselves fully into the present moment. So if there's any parts that feel scattered, just imagining, gathering them forward, pulling, and pulling yourself back in so you can be fully embodied. Keep running the breath, noticing Things start to slow down inside of you. Things get too fast, especially during this time of year too. We are asked to do a lot of extroverted activity during a very introverted time of year. 
We are meant to go deep into the kind of deep into the cave this time of year. All of nature is doing that. And yet we have a culture that tells us to be out in the world and be really social. And so there's kind of this dissonance that happens. And I think that's a lot of why we get really stressed this time of year. So imagining yourself retreating from the world, just going deep, deep, deep inside. Maybe even imagining yourself being a bear cub going into the cave, deep into the earth. Noticing Mother Earth around you with the cool soil. Maybe you can even smell it. And you have tree roots on either side holding the cave securely. And you notice yourself start to just really slow down. Your nervous system gets slower. Maybe even your movements are slower. This is a time for slowing down and going inside. As you hunker down into this cave, I want you to notice what you want to bring with you and what you want to leave behind. This is a time of sorting out what we want to bring, what has value, and what needs to let go, be let go of. So for a moment, we're going to just sit with what has value to bring with me into this really internal space, and what can I leave over here? Spend just about 30 seconds just asking into that question. That's good. We really get to choose how we live. And sometimes I think if we don't slow down enough, I definitely can relate to this, and tune in enough, we just run on autopilot and we stop tuning into what really lights us up. What really is a yes? And what really is a no? And how do we get those signals? Well, maybe everybody's got something different. For me, my yes feels very expansive. If someone invites me you know, to a social outing or something and I'm really feeling connected. I get this very energized, expansive feeling. My no feels contracted and like I have to push through something. And so I invite you to kind of ask into that too. Like, what does your body show you when something feels really congruent, really alive? Ask the test right now for your body is to show you, show me my yes. What does it feel like in an embodied way? Make a note of that. Probably we'll get an instant reaction. Our bodies love to give us messages. They so want us to get it right. Now let's ask into what, show me what my no is like. Just notice what your body does. You know, maybe you feel scattered or maybe you get contracted. Really focus on something you know you really don't want to do. Maybe some request for some holiday thing or what does your body do to give you the message that it's not congruent?
Good, good. Make a note of that. I know for me, um, given that I am just on the other side of a rather transformational experience um, of going through of going through a diagnosis with lymphoma and then five months of chemotherapy and um, and really wanting for it to be an initiation into a new life, being very, very intentional about not seeing it just as pathology, but my body trying to help me get a message and not wanting <clears throat> to miss the opportunity to do things differently, to bring my body into alignment. And really being congruent with kind of my soul or my essence is yes, and really being congruent with the no has felt more and more important as I go through this. And I'm sure all of you, although I don't know you yet, <laughs> um, have probably had an experience where you felt like your body or some situation was trying to wake you up. Maybe for a second, just think about what was the most impactful situation like that was trying to help you wake up. Even if it seemed like pathology or something terrible, um, which I mean, there is suffering and pain. I'm not bypassing that. To think about that situation, or maybe you're in it right now, and asking yourself, what if the universe really does conspire in my favor? What if my body is always working in my favor? How would that change the narrative of certain situations that I, you know, have written a story about as being bad or as being how would it change that? And how would that change how I hold the experience in my body? I know for me, it was really getting caught in the suffering and seeing things as being pathology. And then a lot of light coming in and a lot of growth and reevaluation of, of what it really means to be here on the planet. And then we're suffering and growth <laughs> and kind of toggling between the two. You know, it's not to bypass the hard stuff. So let's just for a moment, ask into your system, what is my hard stuff right here, right now that I can hold space for? Feel where it is in your body. Notice sort of the quality, the texture, maybe even the story that goes with it. Just sort of notice the story. Don't get too attached to it, but notice it. And then asking into your body, what if I saw this experience as the universe helping me to grow, helping me to wake up? How would I hold that differently in my body? And just see if anything shifts in your body. See if anything starts to change. What if I lived my life congruent with my yes and honoring my no on a consistent basis? How would my life look different? Would it look different? And what's getting in the way of that? For some people, it's people pleasing. 
for other people, it might just be habituated, you know, saying yes to things that, that you just don't give a lot of thought to. So dropping back into your body, should it go just another level deeper? Deep, deep, deep into the cells and tissues and bones of your body. Really recognizing it, bowing to it as the miracle that it is. Such a complex machine. And if you're feeling tired, maybe you notice fatigue in your body. I know it's that time of year when we often do. What would it feel like rather than pushing through the fatigue to allow yourself to just be floating in the fatigue, sort of seeing the fatigue as actually a resting place. Again, your body's message to slow things down if only for a moment, to just really drop in. I'm noticing in this moment that I'm feeling really grateful to be in this space with you all. I'm noticing that I was really nervous to jump in here. I've never done this before. Uh, I'm noticing that I am really hoping that you're able to drop deeply in today. So I wanna take a minute for you to drop in and see what you're noticing. What is alive in you in this moment? recognizing that all is welcome. If you're noticing yourself starting to wander in any way, making a Christmas list or thinking about all the things you need to do, can you gently return to the present moment with me? Gently return to your beautiful, amazing body, even if it's a little creaky like mine can be sometimes. Love the creaks, <laughs> recognize we earned them, we've lived a while. Good. Just one layer deeper into the emotional body. Should you notice what emotions are living in you? Do you have a little twinge of anxiety somewhere? Does your heart feel full? Are you longing for something that you haven't spoken about? I often thought meditation was a way to avoid pain and meditation was actually what brought me or pain was actually what brought me to my meditation practice. Um, a lot of emotional pain. And what I found is it doesn't have you escape pain, but it does help create a little space around it. And it helps to move the pain faster because you can see it for what it is. So it, it just creates a little space there. Um, but yeah, it's not about 
It's not about pushing away pain and suffering, which I think a lot of people try to do that. Um, it's also not about shutting off the noise in the head. Our brains are super busy. For me, it's about being more gentle with a very active, busy, distracted mind at times and dropping the story. Now let's check in and see, is there a story you're running right now in this moment that you want to drop? Maybe there's a story that some family stuff got hooked or there's a story about how you're being perceived in a certain circumstance. Sometimes it's just enough to say, this is a story I'm telling myself. Sometimes it's just enough to really acknowledge the story. Even if it keeps running, you can now see it as a story. Let's just drop in and see, are there any stories running? Is there a people pleaser that runs a story? I think that's mine, is wanting to make sure that everyone feels safe and comfortable and and happy and all of those things can be really beautiful and they have a place, but I think it's also uh, can go too far if you're not being congruent with your own self and not setting boundaries. And the importance of setting boundaries has everybody ultimately feel safe, even though it doesn't, it can feel very scary to do that. What if we also ask into, are there any boundaries I need to set that help me to feel more safe and comfortable within myself? Let's kind of notice what arises. I know that I feel safer when I'm around people who I know will tell me the truth and I know will set boundaries because then you never have to wonder, you know, are they doing this because they want to do it or are they doing it because they just are afraid to say no. It's, it's very comforting to be around people who are authentic and direct in their communication. Why don't we do one more scan through the body? See if there's anything else that needs your attention. Is there anything else that feels out of alignment physically, emotionally, mentally? And scanning through. Is there a truth you need to speak in the next coming weeks? Is there a boundary you need to set? Is there some kind of self-care you've been avoiding for some reason that needs to be engaged in? All these questions are so important, and I just invite you to really look into that and see if there's some things that you've been avoiding that you really need to embrace to live the happiest, most vibrant, congruent self that you can.
And so I'd like to end this meditation with three ohms. Just thank you so much for spending time with me. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate being able to do this. It's a new experience for me, and I hope it was as enjoyable for you as it was for me. So we'll do three ohms out loud if you want to. Uh, if you just want to do it in your head, that's great. Deep breath in. Oh. Oh. fruits of our practice be a blessing to all beings everywhere. Thank you so much.